conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Welcome back to Freedom Fest 2016. We are reporting to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the exceptional conservative Ken McClinton. We are sitting with James Copeland from the Manhattan Institute. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have you on the air with us today. Thanks. My pleasure to be here. Listen, you have done a great amount of research regarding uh, something that the Department of Justice should be investigating. <laughs> uh, it is the Department of Justice handling uh, of criminal uh, cases of corporations. Uh, the overcriminalization of America is what you're referring to. Uh, how do you define overcriminalization? Well, overcriminalization really has three main components. One is just sort of the expansion of the number of criminal laws. So just looking at the federal level, there are now 4,500 federal statutory crimes, but if you count regulations that create crimes through, through regulatory rulemaking, there are more than 300,000 federal regulatory crimes. The second is, is the fact that uh, a lot of these crimes are ill-defined and so it's it's hard for the average individual businessman or, or corporation even to know where the boundaries of the law are and the third part of this is a lot of them lack uh, so-called criminal intent requirements so they don't specify one way or the other with the state of mind what that means is that the courts will often interpret these laws to say that you're guilty of a crime even if you didn't know uh, that what you were doing was criminal now uh, you did a presentation earlier today, and we had our conversation beforehand, and, and I made reference to this concept uh, of an organized crime uh, system uh, that is forcing the little man or the little guy uh, to pay uh, them a portion of whatever they've earned uh, for protection. Uh, am, am I going a little too far uh, in terms of describing what DOJ is doing right now with corporations and small businesses? Uh, I don't think you're going too far, really. I actually had a slide in my presentation with uh, Marlon Brando as Don Vito Corleone <laughs> and said, uh, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. I mean, I do think that the small business uh, owner or the family farmer or entrepreneur is in a little different position than the big businesses, and, and the way the government handles those cases is different. And as I discussed in, in my talk, uh, individuals often get targeted uh, and and. Unlike uh, Secretary Clinton, uh, they, they don't get prosecutorial discretion uh, where they say, even if the law doesn't say intense required, uh, we're not going to prosecute you because you didn't mean to do anything wrong. So we talked about uh, a gentleman, uh, Lawrence Lewis, for instance, uh, I discussed him in my talk earlier. He was a, a, a guy, an African-American guy, grew up without any money, was a janitor at a veteran's retirement home, and then moved his way up to chief engineer, sort of the American dream. Mm -hmm. And as that retirement home was flooding uh, and sewage was backing up, obviously he didn't want the veterans to be in sewage filth, so he tried to reroute a, uh, a, a pipe to get the... The, the blockage ended, and, and un, unbeknownst to him, he thought that the pipe was going to put this into the sewage facilities, and it un, unfortunately for him ran into a creek that fed into the Potomac River, and so he became a federal criminal, and they prosecuted this man, um, and, and this is the sort of treatment that the average individual gets here uh, that well-connected political people may not get this, the, the, the same treatment, but uh, even though he didn't mean to do anything wrong, and this happens time and again, so... You, you speak of you know, over 300, almost 50, 350,000 regulations. There is no doggone way a small businessman is going to know more than maybe five or ten of them. He doesn't have time. You're running an operation. You're there, running a business. There's no way. And most of these crimes are not self-evidently wrong. So... Uh, the, the old maxim, the ignorance of the law is no excuse, is an old maxim in Anglo-American law, uh, but it, it hails from a time when uh, people were basically being prosecuted for crimes like murder and rape and assault and robbery. Everyone knows those are wrong. Yeah. Uh, and now we're talking about you don't have the right font or type size or signage uh, on your wall or on your boat. And that's a very different sort of, of crime because it's not self-evidently wrong behavior. And, and so 
that, that's the distinction. Lawyers call this malum prohibitum versus malum in se, and there was a good scene in Legally Blonde about this in one of her early classes. Uh, but these sort of malum prohibitum crimes, they're only wrong because the government says they're wrong. Now, that doesn't mean the government has no reason sometimes for these regulations, but the fact that you could wind up in jail for unintentionally messing up one of these rules is very troubling. It, that is quite troubling. Uh, Justice Out of the Shadows, Federal Deferred Prosecution Agreements, and the political order James Copeland from the Manhattan Institute is with us today. We have a few more moments uh, with you because I know your time is very precious. You're on your way back to Washington, D.C., where we broadcast from. Uh, Got to ask you this. Uh, is there any hope, is there any remedy for what's happening? Forgive me, it's not Washington, D.C., New York. Uh, but uh, is there any hope uh, of remedy for what DOJ is doing right now, penalizing the small guy uh, who doesn't have access to corporate attorneys who you can pay $250, $300, $400 an hour to handle these matters? Well, there is, and unfortunately, uh, it's been suggested, but the White House is opposing it with some left-wing groups' uh, encouragement. So one of the things, I, I, we met with the White House folks a couple years ago, various right-leaning, libertarian-leaning, market-leaning uh, individuals, thought leaders, met with folks at the Domestic Policy Council of the White House, and they said, well, one of the last things we want to do is criminal justice reform. Um, and really? We yeah. We'd already been working on these issues uh, with various leaders in Congress. So the House of Representatives set up a bipartisan task force, Republicans and Democrats, to look at this issue a couple years ago. And this fall they came out with the, the end product of that, various bills. One of those uh, really goes to this question of intent. So what it says is, if Congress doesn't specify... Uh, whether a crime requires intent. We're going to assume some level of intent. Uh, in other words, Congress can say, oh, it's a national security secret, we want to penalize gross negligence, as they did. Yeah. Um, but uh, they have to say so. Because uh, that's sort of the opposite of what it is now. Now it's, well, if, if, if it doesn't say anything, you're on the hook for it, even if it's something you would never know is wrong. Uh, and we wanted to sort of invert that as a presumption. But Congress could always go back and change it. Um, a bipartisan, again, a bipartisan group of, of legislators came out with this. Unfortunately, some of the environmental activist groups and others said, well, this is going to make it harder to prosecute these yeah. crimes, which is the point. And the White House agreed with them and it has blocked this up. So even though criminal justice reform is something they wanted to get done, um, to them it's mainly sentencing reform. It's mainly uh, trying to get uh, convicted uh, drug offenders out of prison. There's pros and cons to, to that sort of approach. But, but various Republicans are saying, no, we think that this sort of mens rea is what it's called legally, but this criminal intent reform is important, and we want this as a part of the package, and the White House has basically said, no, uh, it's our way or the highway, and that means that they may not get it done this year as the clock is ticking with an election on the, on the Exactly, exactly. Uh, you did a, a wonderful report. I've gone through the executive summary of it. I, I'm simply appalled because we're talking about uh, attacks upon free speech. We're talking about attacks upon the capital of the organizations themselves. We're talking about an attack against small business people. It's almost mafia-like. Uh, how, James, can people get in contact with you uh, to at, at least get this report? Yeah, reach out to us anytime at the Manhattan Institute. Our general line is is 212-599-7000. You may or may not reach me because I travel a lot. Yes. But but uh, somebody there will be able to get you the reports. They can visit our website, which is www.manhattan-institute.org. Uh, and you can find all this sort of stuff. Anyone can shoot me an email as well. It's J-C-O-P-L-A-N-D, like Copland, at manhattan-institute.org. And you'll be able to find, uh, find me that way. So we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, we'll give you any information you want. And we're doing various, in addition to this federal work, we're doing work on the states. We're, we've done now four reports. We're getting ready to release our fifth on states. And it turns out that states are doing the same thing. They're adding lots and lots of new laws every year. And they're letting their regulators write crimes without going back for a legislative vote. And it's ensnaring a lot of small business owners and family farmers at the state level as well. Wow. James Copeland, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me. Great. James Copeland, the Manhattan Institute. If you don't have it, you need to get it. Uh, I have the privilege of having it in front of me. But it is the summary of reports, Justice Out of the Shadows, Federal Deferred Prosecution Agreements, and the Political Order. Ladies and gentlemen, there are too many small businesses that are being raped by our government, uh, and we need to find a way to protect them. Thank you so much for being with us, James. Thanks for having me.
Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.